Crash testing is an essential part of automotive safety, helping to ensure that cars and other vehicles are designed and built to protect occupants and pedestrians in the event of a collision. So in this video, we are taking a look at different types of crash test that are conducted to evaluate the safety of cars. So let's start with the frontal impact test. The frontal impact test is one of the most common crash tests conducted on cars. A typical scenario is a head-on collision between two oncoming cars at moderately high speeds. In most collisions of this type, only a part of the vehicle front width structure is involved, that is the two colliding vehicles are offset. A single crash test is big and costly, with some crash test dummies priced at $125,000 apiece, while a single test costs $100,000 or more. A vehicle prototype used in a test could easily run $250,000. The dummy's job is to simulate a human being during a crash while collecting data that would not be possible to collect from a human occupant. Also, it helps researchers and engineers understand how different types of impacts affect the body and to evaluate the safety of vehicles. When testing the impact of a car crash, you might assume that the most expensive thing in the collision would be the cars. But no, according to Insider, the latest crash test dummies are loaded with sensors and new tech, which are very sophisticated and made up of more than 30,000 parts, and they can cost $1 million. The female dummy most commonly in use today, called the Hybrid 35F, is basically a shrunken version of the male Hybrid 3 dummy, with male proportions and weight distribution. These crash test dummies endure thousands of crashes and can last more than 30 years in service. The dummies come in different sizes and they are referred to by percentile and gender. For example, the 50th percentile male dummy represents the median-sized male. It is bigger than half the male population and smaller than the other half. This is the dummy most commonly used in crash testing, it weighs 170 pounds and is 70 inches tall. The dummies are equipped with sensors and other instruments such as accelerometers, load sensors, and motion sensors that measure the forces and impacts involved in a crash, such as acceleration, deceleration, and pressure. The accelerometer measures the acceleration in a particular direction. It is the rate at which speed changes. Inside the dummy's head, the accelerometer measures the acceleration in all three directions. For example, if you bang your head into a brick wall, the speed of your head changes very quickly, which can hurt. But, if you bang your head into a pillow, the speed of your head changes more slowly as the pillow crushes, and it doesn't hurt. Load sensors measures the amount of force on different body parts during a crash. The maximum load in the bone can be used to determine the probability of it breaking. Motion sensors provide information about the movement of the body during a crash, helping to evaluate the effectiveness of safety systems, such as airbags and headrests. Crash test dummies are expensive to produce because they are highly specialized instruments that require a great deal of engineering and precision manufacturing. They must be designed and built to meet specific regulatory requirements and must be able to withstand the forces involved in a crash without sustaining damage. Additionally, crash test dummies must be regularly updated and modified to keep up with changing safety regulations and new vehicle designs. This ongoing research and development can add to the cost of producing and maintaining of the crash test dummies. So now let's get back to the frontal impact test. During this test, a vehicle is driven into a rigid barrier or another vehicle to simulate a head-on collision and the impact is measured to evaluate the car's structural integrity, occupant protection, and restraint systems. The test measures the vehicle's ability to protect its occupants, particularly the driver and front seat passenger. The test is conducted using a standardized procedure that involves three steps. First preparation, crash, and then analysis. Preparation, the test vehicle is positioned on a test track and prepared for the impact. This includes installing a data acquisition system to collect information on the vehicle's performance during the test. Before the crash test, 
dummies are placed in the vehicle, and paints are applied to them. Different colors of paint are used on the parts of the dummy's body that are most likely to experience impact during a crash, such as the knees, face, and skull. The colors help researchers analyze the results of the crash test and identify areas for improvement in the vehicle's design or safety systems. For example, if blue paint from the dummy's face is found on the airbag, this indicates that the face hit the airbag during the crash. Similarly, red paint on the knee may indicate that the knee hit the steering column. This information helps researchers develop improvements to prevent that type of injury in future crashes. Now the crash. The car is ready to crash. All of the instrumentation on the car and dummies has been hooked up and checked. The test vehicle is driven into a rigid barrier or another vehicle at a specific speed, usually around 35 miles per hour. The impact is designed to simulate a head-on collision between two vehicles of the same weight. There are 15 high-speed cameras, including several under the car pointed upward. They shoot around 1,000 frames per second. Next, the car is backed away from the barrier and prepared to crash. A pulley, mounted in a track, pulls the car down the runway. The car hits the barrier at 35 miles per hour. It only takes about 0.1 seconds from the time the car hits the barrier until it stops. After the crash, the front of the car is completely crushed. This is good, as the car has to get crushed and collapse in order to absorb the kinetic energy and stop the car. The front of the car is crushed up to the front wheels, which are pushed back. In this crash, the car actually got shorter some inches. Now it's time for analysis. The data collected during the crash is analyzed to determine the vehicle's crash worthiness. The test measures how well the vehicle's structure holds up in a crash. This includes evaluating the deformation of the vehicle's front end and cabin, as well as the intrusion of the engine and other components into the passenger compartment. Surviving a crash is all about kinetic energy. When your body is moving at 35 miles per hour, it has a certain amount of kinetic energy. After the crash, when you come to a complete stop, you will have zero kinetic energy. To minimize risk of injury, you would like to remove the kinetic energy as slowly and evenly as possible. Some of the safety systems in your car help do this. So, in the next step, the performance of the vehicle's seatbelts and airbags is evaluated to determine how well they protect occupants in a crash. This includes assessing the timing and effectiveness of airbag deployment, as well as the performance of the seatbelts in keeping occupants restrained. And finally, most important, the test evaluates the potential for injury to occupants in the event of a crash. This includes assessing the likelihood of head, chest, and leg injuries based on the data collected during the test. The IIHS conducts three different frontal crash tests, the frontal offset test, driver side, and passenger side small overlap front test. Frontal offset test. During this test, a vehicle travels at 40 miles per hour toward a barrier with a deformable face made of aluminium honeycomb. 40% of the total width of the vehicle strikes the barrier on the driver's side. This is done to simulate a common type of real-world frontal collision that occurs when two vehicles hit each other at an angle. The driver's side small overlap front test is performed to evaluate a vehicle's safety performance in the event of a frontal collision where only a small portion of the front end, typically 25% or less, overlaps with the barrier on the driver's side front corner. The same test is also performed on the passenger side front corner, which is called passenger side small overlap front test. This type of collision is particularly dangerous because the impact can cause the vehicle to spin or rotate, leading to the driver losing control and potentially colliding with other objects or vehicles. Side impact test. Side crashes account for the second highest frequency of death and serious injuries. The side impact test simulates a T-bone collision where the car being tested is struck on the side by another car or a barrier. This type of collision can be particularly dangerous 
as the side of the car offers less protection than the front or rear. Side impact crash tests consist of a stationary test vehicle struck on the driver's side by a barrier or a moving deformable sled to simulate the impact of another vehicle. The 1,500 kg moving deformable barrier has an impact velocity of 31 miles per hour and strikes the vehicle on the driver's side at a 90-degree angle. The longitudinal impact point of the barrier on the side of the test vehicle is dependent on the vehicle wheelbase. In side impact crashes, the occupants of a vehicle are at risk of experiencing severe injuries due to the force and impact of the collision. Two important criteria that are used to evaluate the safety of a vehicle in side impact crashes are the thoracic trauma index and the lateral pelvic acceleration. The thoracic trauma index is a measure of the likelihood of an occupant suffering a serious chest injury during a side impact crash. It is calculated by analyzing the amount of force applied to the chest area of a crash test dummy during a crash. The higher the TTI value, the greater the risk of injury. The lateral pelvic acceleration is a measure of the sideways movement of the occupant's pelvis during a side impact crash. It is calculated by analyzing the acceleration of a crash test dummy's pelvic region during the crash. The higher the LPA value, the greater the risk of injury. Side Pole Crash Test The side pole crash test is a type of crash test used to evaluate the safety of a vehicle in the event of a collision with a narrow pole or tree. The test is designed to replicate what happens when the front left corner of a vehicle collides with another vehicle or an object like a tree or utility pole. This crash test is a challenge for some safety belt and airbag designs because occupants move both forward and toward the side of the vehicle. During the side pole crash test, a vehicle is driven at a specific speed at 20 miles per hour towards a rigid pole of 25 centimeters diameter that is positioned at a predetermined angle of 75 degree to the vehicle. The point of impact is typically at the driver's side of the vehicle and the pole is positioned in such a way that it strikes the vehicle's side between the A and B pillars. The goal of the side pole crash test is to evaluate the vehicle's ability to protect occupants from injury during a side impact collision with a pole. Rollover Test The rollover test simulates a single vehicle rollover, where the car being tested is driven into a ramp or other obstacle that causes it to roll over. Rollover accidents can be particularly dangerous, as they can cause occupants to be thrown from the vehicle and suffer serious injury. During a rollover test, the car is driven onto a platform or ramp that causes it to roll over. The impact is measured to evaluate the car's structural integrity, roof strength, and occupant protection in a rollover situation. Rollover test is important because when you're driving your vehicle on a highway and suddenly you come upon a sharp curve, you may lose control and your vehicle departs the road and rolls over. This test can help ensure that you and your passengers are safe. Rear Impact Test The rear impact test simulates a rear-end collision where the car being tested is struck from behind by another car or a barrier. Rear-end collisions are common and can cause whiplash injuries, which can be serious and long-lasting. Whiplash injuries, associated with rapid and excessive distortion of the spine, it can be long-lasting, difficult to diagnose or treat and extremely debilitating. During a rear impact test, the car is struck from behind by a sled or other barrier at a set speed. The impact is measured to evaluate the car's seat and head restraint systems, as well as its ability to prevent whiplash injuries. If you have a question in your mind, like who does this crash tests? Well, let me tell you that these tests were conducted by independent organizations, such as the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, and European New Car Assessment Program. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is a federal agency in the United States. It is responsible for setting safety standards and conducting research on road safety. The agency conducts crash tests on new vehicles to evaluate their safety and assigns them a rating based on the results. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety 
is a non-profit organization supported by auto insurance companies that conducts research on road safety and vehicle crashes. The organization conducts crash tests on new vehicles and assigns them a rating based on their performance in a variety of crash scenarios. European New Car Assessment Program is a European organization that conducts crash tests on new vehicles sold in Europe. In addition to these organizations, many car manufacturers conduct their own crash tests to evaluate the safety of their vehicles before they are released to the market. These tests are conducted in accordance with industry standards and guidelines, and the results are used to make improvements to the design and safety features of the vehicles. Many countries have car crash test programs or rely on international standards to evaluate the safety of vehicles sold within their borders. In some cases, these programs are run by government agencies responsible for road safety, while in other cases, they may be carried out by independent organizations or industry groups. Some examples of countries with well-established car crash test programs include Japan, Australia, China, India, and more. Safety Ratings After all the tests are complete, a rating is assigned. The IIHS provide ratings like good, adequate, marginal, weak, or poor. If we take an example of Global New Car Assessment Program, each car is given a rating on a 5-star scale. The higher the star rating, the safer the car. The ratings are mainly based on crash test dummies' readings, but certain safety features can earn additional points. To qualify for a one-star rating, Global NCAP requires at least a driver's side airbag. So, what do you think about this video? Do you know what safety rating does your car has? Let me know in the comments. Like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to our channel for more videos like these. And finally, thanks for watching.